While working in the psychiatric emergency service of my local medical center, I see a reference serum level for lithium of 0.5 to 1.5 millimoles per liter. But when ordering a lithium level at my community mental health center, I see a different reference range of 0.6 to 1.2. Googling therapeutic lithium levels returns a variety of different ranges, with only some of the websites including partial references. One could wonder at the range of suggested therapeutic levels and which serum level is best for our patients with bipolar disorder. Hi, Paul Zarkowski here with the Psychopharmacology Institute. Luckily, a recent literature review in the International Journal of Bipolar Disorders examines the evidence basis for the therapeutic serum level of lithium. You might imagine a double-blind trial was run with patients on lithium monotherapy in a uniform phase of bipolar disorder with subjects randomly assigned to different regimens resulting in a priori defined fixed lithium serum ranges. If so, you are not alone. So did a panel of experts in bipolar disorder. These were basically the criteria for their systematic literature review. And the number of studies they found meeting that criteria, a grand total of zero. So they broadened the criteria beyond euthymic bipolar disorder to include subjects with recurrent depression, as long as each diagnosis was reported separately. Also, the criteria were broadened to include other psychotropic medications in addition to lithium, non-randomized studies, as long as there was no clear indication of channeling, a form of allocation bias. And finally, allowing different fixed lithium levels to be compared without an a priori definition. With these expanded criteria, they were able to find seven studies in the preceding 37 years. Combining these seven studies into one set of recommendations was not straightforward, as each study implemented a different number of serum ranges from two to four with different cutoffs in serum levels from as low as 0 0.3 to as high as 1.4. To add to the complexity, not all the studies used recurrence of a mood episode, either manic or depressive, as an outcome measure, as a few studies used rating scales. Three of the studies included data on tolerability and side effects. This is where the expert panel went to work to interpret the seven studies. 33 of the experts completed the questionnaire with consensus defined as 80% agreement. Consensus was reached that a serum level should be measured 12 hours, give or take one hour after the last dose. The 12 hour rule applies whether the dosing is daily or BID for immediate or extended release lithium. The panel also reached a consensus that initial Serum levels in patients on maintenance treatment with lithium should be 0.6 to 0.8 millimoles per liter, with the option to reduce the level to 0.4 to 0.6 millimoles per liter in cases of poor tolerance, or to increase the level to 0.8 to 1.0 in cases of insufficient response. Although a consensus was reached on the need for an upper limit for maintenance treatment, they did not agree on what it should be, with 36% endorsing a limit of 1.0 and 39% endorsing a limit of 1.2 millimoles per liter. Although not a consensus, 63.6% .6 agreed that initial target levels should be lower for those aged 65 to 79, specifically 0.4 to 0.6 millimoles per liter. Although the quality of the seven studies did not meet their original standards, I am still impressed with their process and interpretation. But what about the recommendations for acute treatment? Here, the authors of the current literature review cite the original studies from the early 1970s, establishing the efficacy of lithium compared to antipsychotic medication, with target levels of 0.6 to 1.3 millimoles per liter in multiple studies, and an outlier with an average serum level of around 0.5. Again, the best evidence would compare the outcomes of randomly assigned doses yielding different serum levels. 
The authors cite one study that is closest to this ideal. In this trial with a crossover design, subjects with acute mania were randomized to alternating 10-day blocks of low, medium, or high doses of lithium or placebo. At the end of each 10-day block, serum lithium levels were measured along with rating scales for mania. Serum levels less than 0.4 millimoles per liter led to improvement in about 30% of the blocks compared to improvement in over 80% in levels over 1.2. The levels between these endpoints led to intermediate levels of improvement in that levels of 0.4 to 0.8 millimoles per liter, leading to improvement in just less than 60% of the blocks and levels of 0.8 to 1.2 to improvement in about 70%. Each increase in serum level to the next range led to a statistically significant improvement in rating scales for mania. Toxic symptoms requiring dosage reduction developed in 9 of 68 patients, 5 during high-dose periods, with serum lithium levels of 1.55 to 1.8, and 4 during medium-dose periods, with serum levels of 1.25 to 1.63. The authors of this trial concluded that serum levels of to 1.2 millimoles per liter result in increasing efficacy in patients with acute mania. My take-home point from this literature review is that in the absence of ideal randomized placebo-controlled double-blind studies, the best course of action is to follow a combination of guidelines from the panel of experts for maintenance treatment and the results from the randomized trial in acute mania. Specifically, an initial level of 0.6 to 0.8 millimoles per liter may be targeted for adults of less than 64 years of age. Clinical response should be divided in whether to increase the dose to yield a maximum serum level of 1.2 in patients with acute mania or to 1.0 for maintenance treatment. In patients with poor tolerance or side effects, the dose as low as 0.4 to 0.6 millimoles per liter may be an option. As always, the lowest effective dose should be sought to minimize side effects of lithium, including nephrotoxicity. <music>